Today's lesson is carrying on from what we've had a look at over the last week or so. When we think about fractions, decimals, and percentages, one of the reasons why we invest so much time thinking about them is because they come up constantly. And also they come up when you don't have necessarily access to a calculator or something like that. You've got to do things in your head. Now you're already pretty experienced at this, but we want to make you better. And so I'm going to give you three quick tips for doing mental percentages, some of which you'll be familiar with, others maybe not so much. Then we're going to have some practice on it, and then, depending on how we go with the time, we will play a game. You'll need your device for it, but it's an if, Levan, so we'll see how we go, okay? So, here's uh, for mental percentages. My first tip for you is, when you can, use equivalent fractions. Now, we know what equivalent fractions are. Every percentage that you have ever met is a fraction. It's just a fraction over 100, right? 23% would be 23 over 100, 70%, 70 over 100. But lots of the fractions you're going to encounter, there are nice, convenient equivalent fractions for them. For example, if we said 25% of something, then your mind should immediately think, oh, I have an equivalent fraction for that. That's very simple, right? What's the equivalent fraction for 25%? Okay, Vishaki, you can start us off. One over four, very good. So if I wanted you to find out 25% of a thing, then take that and essentially divide by four. Whatever quantity that you get. So 25%, can someone give me another example of a percentage that you know a nice equivalent fraction for? Jessica? 50%. 50% and the equivalent fraction is someone else? So, okay, Mary? Um, 50%? Oh, one over two. One over two, very good. So you divide by two. Someone give me another percentage that we have going for. Louise? 100%. 100%. So what's the equivalent fraction for that? One over one. So it's one over one, so you don't need to do any calculation. Can someone give me one more? Let's give, Merrick, you've already given me one. Yeah, go ahead, Heya. 20%. 20%. So if I saw 20% of a thing, what would be the equivalent fraction? I should divide by five. Very good. Okay, so you get the idea, right? When you can spot an equivalent fraction, use it. Very good. Tip number one, okay? Tip number two. Use something which you've probably met before, but we haven't th thought about it in this context. Um, significant figures. Use significant figures. Now, I'm not going to ask you just yet, but raise your hand if you know what significant figures are. You're like, I've seen this before. Yes? Ooh, very few hands going up. Okay, hands down. All of you on the uh, right-hand side of your page, write down a number for me. Let's write down, hmm, how about something like this? So... This is actually an important number, I'm not going to tell you what it's important for. A number like this, right? It's very detailed. If I had uh, 131,702 objects, that's very, very detailed. But sometimes I just want to get like a ballpark figure. I want to say, okay, you know what? In the scheme of 131,702 objects, the two, it's not that important. Like if I had 131,700 objects, you'd probably call that about the same, wouldn't you? Would you say that's roughly equivalent? Yeah. How about 131,000? Would you still say that's roughly equivalent? 132. 132 would be a bit closer. Okay. How about 130,000? Would you still say that's roughly the same number? It uh, depends on what it is, isn't it? If you're like, if this is a number of people and I'm in the 1,702, you'd say that's very important. That's very important to me, right? But I think in general, if for example you saw 131,702 grains of sand and 130,000 grains of sand, would you be able to tell which is which? No. Probably not, right? So what we're saying here is that there are some figures that are much more significant. We might say these front two. Right? I could write this as 130,000 and that would have only two significant figures in it. Do you agree? Does that make sense? Um, and often we say, you know, does anyone know what the population of Australia is at the moment? 25 Roughly 25 million. Now we don't mean it's exactly 25 million and six zeros after the end. We are using significant figures. How many significant figures are there for 25 million? Two. Just two, the two and the five. Right? How about when I say there are roughly this many students in the school? There's really just one significant figure, right? You could argue that it's 20 hundreds, but I think we just see the two and that's the part that matters. Okay, so how does that relate to percentages? Well, let me give you an example. 
suppose I asked you to, I had some numbers here prepared, I asked you to calculate this. Okay, now what I'm going to ask you to do is to focus just on the significant figures in these numbers that you can see, in the percentage and also in this quantity over here. What are the significant figures here? It's just the, it's just the three, isn't it? Very good. And what are the significant figures here? Just the one and the five, so I'm just going to put them together. Okay, now here's how you can really quickly work out what this is. Because we're just focused on the important part, right? We should all know our three times tables well enough to say three times 15 instantly is? 45. 45, very good. But what I'm going to say is this is just the significant figures, right? I'm missing some zeros. So it's either 45 or 450 or 4,500. One of these is my answer. Hopefully you can just sort of instinctively look at that and tell me which of these three is the answer. What do you reckon, Mary? 45. 45? Is that 30%? Oh, oh hold on. I, I got some, some angry, angry responses. How did you work out so quickly that it was 450? Yeah. Because there's a zero on the other side. You have to still... Because it's 3 times 15. Oh, so, so, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Divide by 100 is okay, so you've gone straight to the actual direct calculation, but I notice there's a zero here, but there's zeros here as well. How could you think, this is mentally, right? How could you do intuitively work out which one it is? I'll give you a clue, the first one might help. Jessica. So there's one zero in the first one, there's two. So you just cross out one in each of them? Okay, so we're still, you guys are all still doing a calculation of numbers of zeros, right? If I, I've given you a nice easy example here. If I have like seven zeros here and eight zeros here, it starts to become more tricky. Leah, what do you see? 30% Okay, Leah's logic there is so important. It's the whole point of thinking about this mentally. I'm gonna repeat it, right? 45 out of 1,500. This is a tiny proportion of this group of people, right? Whereas 4,500, this is, well, this is bigger than what we started with, right? So it's not likely to be that one. This one's right here in the middle. And as Leah said, 30%, it's about a third. Does that feel like about a third of 1,500 to you? It, it should, because it is about a third of 1,500. It's a bit less than that, isn't it? By the way, why is it a bit less? Have a think. Yeah, go ahead, Richard. 30% isn't quite even. Yeah, very good. Um, what would be closer to a third? What should the percentage be? Yeah, Anush, what do you reckon? Okay, yeah, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, 33 and lots of threes, actually. Dot, 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 dot. Percent. That would be exactly a third. 30% is just a little bit less than that. Make sense? Okay. So we're going to talk about using equivalent fractions, using significant figures. One last tip for you. I want to call your mind back to a word which um, Mrs. Lees and I has actually mentioned a few times, but we learned it last year in algebra. It's um, this word here. Uh, I got to make sure I spelled it well. Commutativity. Am I missing a T and an I? I think I'm missing extra letters. Commutativity. That's better. It's hard to say. It's even harder to spell. Um, when we say that an operation is Commutative, commutative. Um, what does that mean about the operation? Like addition, for example, is commutative. Does anyone know what that means? If you had, for example, five plus three, that's equal to three plus five, right? Do you agree with that? Those, those numbers, they can commute back and forth. That's literally what it means. So what that's talking about is we can change the order, right? Addition is commutative. What's another operation that's commutative? Hey now. Multiplication. multiplication. And that's important to me because you can see all along here, I'm thinking about multiplication and division. So here's a really cool, where did my blue marker go? There it is. On the mind's this. Here's a really cool sneaky thing, right? If you're asked to calculate some percentage, let's call it P, like 30 or 25 or something like that. Some percentage of some number. It just so happens, and I'll let you have a think about it and how it relates to this, that is exactly the same as x percent of p. We can switch the numbers around. Let me give you an example. Um, let's try 72% of 50. Now, I don't know about you, but 72%, that's not a nice, I can't think of an equivalent fraction that nicely hits that. Um, 72 times 5, the significant figures are still quite, like my brain sort of 
can't handle those. But because multiplication, this is really 72% times 50, right? Because multiplication is commutative, you can actually swap these numbers over and get something nice and easy. It's the same as 50%, that's my pronumeral P, of 72. Do you see I'm, I'm swapping them? Okay. We know what 50% is, right? It's a nice equivalent fraction. What's it equal to? We actually said it before. It's a half, right? Because someone tell me what half of 72 is. 37. It's 36. 36. Which, if you like, you can go to your calculator and you can verify. If you punched in 72% times 50, you would get 36 as well. So, here are these three really handy techniques that you can use mentally to not have to require you to get a calculator out. All right?